Good morning. Here I am in Morrison's in Skipton. And you're probably wondering why I'm in Morrison's in Skipton, apart from the fact that I'm here for my half price breakfast, which has become part of my life actually. And it's, uh, I've managed to eat £2.13 worth of breakfast in the morning and £2.13 worth of a full meal. It could be fish and chips, it could be scampi and chips, it could be sausage and mash, it could be anything. So I'm, I'm living on about £4.50 a day, which is quite amazing really in terms of food because I don't eat anything else. But I came back here last night um, to Skipton, having finished my walk just north of Briarfield or it could be south of Bryfield, I can't work it out yet. And I'll be honest with you, I ran myself into some serious trouble yesterday, but I survived. And what happened was, as you know, you saw the film, I set off at six o'clock in the morning, did extremely well, had a really good day, uh, but when it came to around about midday or slightly later, the, the temperature went up to 30, 35 degrees and I was walking down the right hand side of the canal uh, on the towpath. Uh, I wish I could have been on the left because it was like all sheltered in trees but for about three miles I walked in really hot sunshine and uh, it, it took me by surprise that I stopped down, I stopped for a, a rest, sat on a bench and felt very faint. I got dreadful pins and needles right down my left arm. I was sweating. Uh, I found it hard to even get up. And um, I was worried about passing out, if I'm to be honest with you, because I do remember this happened to me in Scotland when I was up near Edinburgh. And I was sheltering from the sun on a really hot day alongside a power station, which is not far from Dunbar. And uh, when I got up and walked up this hill, got to the top of the hill and I collapsed. And I was unconscious for I don't know how long. And fortunately, uh, a passerby asked me if I was okay because I was laid on the floor. And he, he drove me back to my camper van, which was in Dunbar. And it was a very frightening experience. And I thought I'd never go through that again, but I did. So I gave myself quite a lot of time to recover. I managed to get to a bus stop and I managed to get into Cone, Cone Town Centre where I needed to change buses to get back to Fowridge and even on the bus I still felt a bit queasy so I sat down for about half an hour in the, in the a strong, by that time that the, 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 I was in a shade and it was, it was cool and I bathed my head in water and got control of myself and um, went back to the camper van and, and just went to bed for a couple of hours and had a really good sleep and uh, <clears throat> this morning I just feel quite normal uh, and so I had a decision to make about what I was going to do and looked at the weather forecast and it looks like being uh, warm again but there's quite a strong breeze which is something that I missed yesterday if ever I needed a strong breeze it was then so I'm going to drive back now to to Briarfield and find I think I can't remember the number of the bridge but but start from where I left off yesterday I just need to park the van and head down for Burnley but if I don't feel right I'll abort so it's as simple as that and uh, I'm just waiting for my breakfast now. I do like my breakfast and I'm, I'm going to carry on as if it didn't happen and just kick myself up the arse, really, for being a bit silly. Trying to get all the way to Burnley. Um, I've, I've had a really good, steady, slow build-up to this walk and I am feeling really good. I'm walking well, my knees are OK and, and I, I feel as if I'm back on the coast path where I could walk, you know, what I, I was doing in when I walked around Britain I was doing like 15, 20 miles a day well I'm just going to take it very steady today and see how I get on and um, and whatever I do today if I do abort I'll tack on to tomorrow so that's the situation 
and um, I'd just like to say to everybody by the way I've quite a, quite a big upsurge in contacts I've got myself a little bit swamped again which is a very nice position to be in where I'm getting lots and lots and lots of messages I'm, I'm getting lots and lots of new friends my figures have shot through the roof and I, I'm something I've been waiting for <laughs> And I'm very, very pleased and I'd just like to thank all of you people who have come on board quite recently. Uh, you're obviously enjoying the films. The numbers have rocketed and I, I'm, I'm absolutely delighted, absolutely delighted. And I'm doing my best with the films and I'm doing a bit of running around and all the rest of it. But it's worth it. And once again, thanks to you all. Thank you very much. You've done a great job. So I'm just going to wait until my breakfast comes. And then I'm going to have a shave, tidy myself up. At the moment, yesterday's film is uploaded in my camper van onto YouTube, so that will be available in the next 10, 20 minutes. And um, it's great, I'm loving it. But as I say, I, I, sometimes I do push myself too hard, and I've done it again. <laughs> but there you are. See you later. Just look at that. How can you beat that for two pounds and thirteen pence? Absolutely amazing.
it's 12.45 now and I'm still in Burnley. I have seen one or two exits where I could turn off to the right off the path and into the town centre to get a bus but it's, I haven't done enough miles yet, I'm going to carry on. I'm feeling quite reasonable, especially after yesterday. The one good thing about today is it's slight breeze, there's no sun, it's quite cloudy, anything could happen with the sky. Uh, but I'm making pretty good progress actually, I'm quite happy and I've got absolutely no ill effects from yesterday which was simply down to the sun and me being a bit silly really and pushing it too hard. When I got back to the camper van it was a hundred degrees. <laughs> so my milk had gone off and my butter and all the rest of it which is why it's a good idea at a time like this to eat at Morrison's for the price that I'm eating and it doesn't cost me much and I know I went into detail with that earlier on but this is I'm living pretty cheaply at the moment I think the biggest item I'm spending on is beer if anything and cups of tea which it always was really but it's quite unusual to be walking along this particular stretch I haven't seen any other people to talk to I haven't seen one boat either, apart from static boats, apart that marina that, that I first entered when I just left Briarfield. I think I missed about maybe four or five bridges or maybe a couple of miles out of that. Uh, it's difficult to work out really. And the idea of walking from the centre and leaving the van in a very safe place, which I always do, where you know there's lots of people around I'd rather do that than leave it in a fairly isolated place by a canal side and uh, I, I, well, I'm not suggesting for one minute that there's anything wrong with people in Burnley but you just don't know who to trust or where and it's not worth the risk and so uh, I've done all the hard walking first it took, took about uh, an hour to actually get to the marina um, by the time I actually found it and got in. Oh, there's two fantastic dogs just walking past me. Hello. Hello, fellas. Just look at these. Is it my baggy wants some sandwiches, don't you? You want some sandwiches. Famous. Is this what, sorry? Famous. Famous. Are you famous for nicking people's sandwiches, are you? She is as well, yeah. Is she, really? She's had three of ours. Oh, really? Oh, well, there's, there's only water. Do they, do they want some water? I've got loads of it. If you have been to a river. Oh, have they? Oh, that's OK. Yeah. <laughs> it's a better day than yesterday in that it was like too hot yesterday, wasn't it? Too hot. I yeah. boiled. I, 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 nearly, I nearly collapsed, to be honest with you. Cause it, I, yeah, I was walking along the canal and I just went a bit woozy and I got like real strong pins and needles in my arms. So you've got to worry about things like that. Yeah, yeah, be careful. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I haven't, do you know, I haven't seen, you're the first people I've actually stopped and talked to today. Well, stopped, really? you've stopped and talked to me. Really? But yeah, usually there's been loads of people on the canal. There's nobody, there's no boats or anything. No, there's not. But when I you think they're, they're thinking it's going to rain. Yes, I think so. You know, you, you look at all this, you know, the canal has been here for 200 years. Yeah. And when you, when you go into a town on a train, you always see the back of the places, don't you? And all yeah. the you know, the, the, the not so desirable looks, if you understand. Yeah. But it's it's still beautiful. I can imagine, you know, you take all these trees down and just look at those houses at that side. Yeah. I bet that, I bet they were magnificent in the day, don't you? Yeah. And, yeah. It, and it's just all these trees that have grown up. Mm. Are you just local people taking them for a walk then? Yeah, we always do with these. They like this one. For you people who didn't see it, this is uh, this is Bank Hall Dry Dock, and I came here last week and made a, a little bit of a film for Brian, who's the proprietor, and uh, he wants to sell the business, and it's in a great location. But unfortunately, he's just popped out on an errand, according to Keith, who works here as well, and. Uh, I wondered where it was going to be. I, I, it's not marked on the map actually. 
But I did enjoy myself here showing boats coming in and out of this dry dock and it's just unfortunate that, uh, that Brian's not here today. So never mind. There's a bit of a wind building up now as well. It's the, the absolute opposite to yesterday and I'm very pleased about that. So, on we go. Harbour and I've met Harry Corns and uh, Harry is the local artist and here you see the uh, double arch bridge which is just uh, maybe about three or four hundred yards from here so you've, you're responsible for all of these paintings and Harry how yeah. long have you been doing this painting? Well my first art lesson was at 40 and when I was 50 I was doing it commercially Yes. and I mean some of these pictures like the one here you look at about three or four visits to get it finished but it's just a pleasure to sit there and paint basically yes have you always lived in this village no I don't, I don't live here I live at Neller ah. which is a, a yeah. village that are going back down the A59 towards Preston oh, right. it's about just about half an hour's drive right. I come here two or three times a week right that's very nice yeah I mean it's a fantastic place isn't it it's, it's good, almost it's, unique it's the, it's the best breakfast on the planet here it, it, I've probably in love with this village oh, it's really good it's really you know, good. There's, there's loads of people that are, are suddenly know that Brilliant. I didn't know That's anybody right initially right but right. I've had a lovely time and I'm back here now for probably about the third or fourth time right. and uh, I think today is going to be my last time because I've I've got south of Burnley now or should I say west of Burnley I'm going out towards Hopton and Blackburn uh, and so I, I, I come back here because it's such a good internet signal in, in yeah. Skipton and it's not so good down there but it's only a very quick chat, but it's been a pleasure meeting but, you, Harry. So, but make sure you eat here in the afternoon. The, the, the meals and the chips here are to die for. They're absolutely so Well, I might come back later but on. Make sure you do. You know, I don't know quite what's happening today. I'm, I'm meeting Chris and I don't know where, where I'm going from there, but it's been a pleasure meeting you. And you, sir. Okay, thank you so, very much. Thank you very much. Cheers. This now, is Dom. Grant as well, and apparently you're a regular in here, Grant. Yeah. You come, you come quite often for your breakfast with Harry then, do you? Well, try not to. <laughs> <laughs> try and avoid him, but but eat his toast and his marmalade. Yeah. That's that's a good plan, isn't it? Yeah. Lovely to meet you, mate. Yeah, Lovely yeah. to meet you. Same to you. Yeah. Cheers. Do you want to tap natural or actually look at you? <laughs> well, just look as if you like each other. Oh. <laughs>
Well, here I am back in East Martin and I'm sat in front of a, a, a gentleman that I wanted to come back and see and he actually called me yesterday to say, why don't you call round tomorrow and let's have a bit of a, a natter at about 11 o'clock and it's an absolute pleasure to be back in East Martin, which is my most visited place on this walk. And so can I introduce you please to Chris? Yeah. And Chris. This is the PR bit, folks. This yes. is the PR bit, yes. It's a very low key thing, this. It's, it's not gonna be too serious. Magna Carta. Chris was a member of, and a founder of, uh, Chris Simpson was, was a member and founder of, of the band Magna Carta. And bearing in mind that the, um, that my stats on YouTube suggest that over 90% of my audience are over 65 would you believe it's, um, it's not quite true but I'm quite sure that everybody's heard of you Chris well yeah the thing is uh, as somebody once said you don't put new wine into old wineskins it's <laughs> it's the, it's the stuff in the old wineskins that keeps going absolutely absolutely but you know, you're a Yorkshireman, you're from not far from Harrogate, and here we are, you, 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 I'm not saying back where you started, you're back where you want to be. What a fantastic place to be. It most certainly is. is. I mean, I, I'm a Yorkshireman, I'm a Yorkshire Dalesman, really. Yes. Because the Dales now gets a lot of publicity, a lot of PR, but there's still sometimes a misunderstanding, Jim, of what it's all about. And I know in my old village of Hamstwaite, Yes. There's hell let loose at the moment because there's this proposed dumping of very, very expensive houses. And this, this will cross over Watling Street it, uh, and the old Roman Ford down by the river there and the Saxon Peel Tower of the church. Yes. And it just seems that that doesn't seem to matter. No. And I think it matters dreadfully. Yes, yes. It seems to have all gone mad over the last sort of 50 years, doesn't it, really, and the way things are today, you know. That's what I like about where we are now. It's like more or less unspoiled, isn't it? That's it's right. I mean, I think as Aldous Huxley said, the last 50 years has gone at the speed of Stone Age Man to television. Yes. That, that, that's quite a thought. But it has gone mad. And I, I think one of the things, uh, social media, I detest it. I mean, yeah. it's very, very useful. I mean, we wouldn't be making this without it. But social media has got a lot to answer for. Absolutely. And you see these sort of seemingly mindless young souls wandering around towns with the obvious mobile phone welded into the left hand or something. Yes, you know? yes. And somehow the age of conversation and the age of characters seems to have taken the back seat. You look over there, beyond our boat, and uh, basically it hasn't changed that much. No, no, no. Just uh, apart from the fact that uh, this is originally a workplace. Yes. And the, uh, and the old bargemen must have had it tough. Oh, absolutely. You absolutely. know, if it, if it wasn't pouring with rain, it was snowing. Yep. And then if it was snowing, what did you say, it was 62? Yeah. Then all the canals froze over, I suppose they just starved. Yes, exactly, exactly. Interesting what you said about Aldous Huxley, I've read everything about him, fantastic. I, 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 yeah. I, I adore the guy. Yeah. Chris, it's getting a little bit breezy out here, I'm frightened of it ruining this interview. Shall we go inside and have a look at one or two things that you want to show me? Why don't we do that thing? That's probably, and have a cup of tea. <laughs> played me a, a sample of your music and it was absolutely fantastic thank you very much indeed and and uh, it's just a pity that i didn't meet you years ago because that's that's the kind of 
bass playing that I play. I'm a bass player, but um, I would love to have been there to have uh, recorded something for you in terms of the camera work and stuff like that. Mm. And um, it would have been great to have been there. Now, you, I notice you've got one or two uh, posters on the wall. Just um, one or two. Well, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So when did it, and uh, uh, when I say when did it all end, um, it, it, you, you, that was the final concert that you were showing. That was in Ripley, wasn't it? When you, that would have been right. at the beginning of this year. Ripley near Harrogate. Uh, my, my family come from now my mum's side it, it's an amazing place but yeah. they've got a venue there which used to be the old town hall ah, right. and I used to go there with my uncle John who had a corn mill yes. and we used to he'd take me up there when I was four or five years old and watch the old men playing billiards and in fact our wonderful mouth harp player on that clip Stewie he came up and we were having some sandwiches and a beer and so forth up there and it is a huge billiards table and he said, my God, on a clear day you could see the centre pocket from here. <laughs> Which I thought was a great line. Yeah. But yeah, that was the 25th of January and it really is the end because there's things I could do in the past I can't do now, but the songs are still there. And, yes. Uh, and, and the song is the powerhouse. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. And I noticed the other one when when you you finish it, you 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 did a concert in Amsterdam in two thousand and nine, which was the end of Magna Carta as well. <laughs> Supposedly, yeah. yeah. We, we've had more sort of comebacks and Frank Sinatra, but uh, really, well, but I don't that, know. that's the usual thing. But that's the Royal Theatre Carré, which was originally uh, an old circus. Yes, and it's the, the Dutch regarded as their most you know the most impressive venue yes we played it and filled it and that was really quite something yes then again you know in 71 we did the albert hall with the royal philharmonic and it's got still got the same sort of kudos really yeah and, and the other noticeable thing about i don't know we just sat here for maybe 10 15 minutes listening to some of the tunes and and, uh, and stuff yorkshire is very much featured and and i notice on Everything that you you know the, the the sort of scenery and and the, and the words and the places and everything is mm. very much Yorkshire is in your heart. I'm very interested in that. That's a very good way of putting it because that's that's so. I grew up l lucky enough to grow up on a hilltop, yes, above Hamstwaite in Nidderdale. We no electricity, and we had a ghost, which was remarkable, but. We sort of just got by, you know. We yes. weren't a wealthy family or anything like that. Right. But we used to, you know, have sort of out of date things like conversation. Yes. Sitting around a pine top table on a winter night, and my dad would talk about his day's doings at the flour mill, you yes. know, and, and it was just all conversation. Yes. And it was great. Yes. It, it was pure gold looking back. Yes, absolutely. And the thing is to characters, because I'm writing about them in books now, which I just don't want to see them disappear and become just a, a sort of a long ago entity. Yes, absolutely. And, and on this subject of books, I mean, do you do much writing then, Chris? I mean, I know well, you were telling me that you're doing something with the... Uh, the Countryman, was it? Dalesman. Dalesman, I beg uh, Looks like that's going to be the case, as I get it straightened out. It, uh, I wrote a book called The Visitor, which got terrific reviews, amazing reviews, and pe you know, people liked it. And I think I managed to get the, the feel of the Yorkshire Dales uplands Yes. in that. And then this book, when it finally gets out there, is 12 stories. Yes. Quite a lot of them sort of spiritual content and a fair few of them according to a dear friend of mine that scare you half to death, you know. Because, really? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's really interesting. And I mean, here you are back in, in, in Yorkshire. I mean, may I ask about you, you, your, uh, your narrowboat? It's absolutely gorgeous. How long have you been, how long have you had this? had it uh, 12 years. Yes. And it, it is a wonderful way of life. Um, 
I think, as I said to you earlier, when you actually get on the water, yes, you can feel it does something. Yes, it uh, you, you just everything sort of just peacefully settles down. Right. Because I don't know, probably everybody watching this clip, Jim, that you're taking must be probably feeling the same way I do. Yeah. There's no point in listening to the news anymore. No. It's disastrous. And I think the, the, the human psyche has taken a right battering. A lot of it's its own fault. Yes. You, you know, we've got the, the virus now. Yep. But in fact, I'm fascinated by and being able to see so much of the ancient world. Yes. And they weren't daft. Yes. The, the Maya foretold yes. COVID-19 coming. Yes. No, no two ways about it. No. Nostradamus, yep. And we just ignore it. Mm -hmm. And what do we do? We're captivated by social media. Yep. Which I think sort of uh, probably hides quite a lot of things diabolical because your privacy and, and, and your, your actual soul centre yes. is damaged. Well, yes, and, and I, 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 with me, obviously, I've, I've been on this walk now since the April 2018 around Great Britain, and, and I'm just doing this particular walk along the Leeds of Liverpool because I wanted to get my, my knees right because I've been inactive during lockdown. And, and I'm yeah. becoming unfit, and so I, I just want to get my fitness back. And and I started this 200, sorry, 127 mile venture really to meet some interesting people. So I would say I've hit the jackpot, wouldn't you? You know, well, uh, I've met a, a Yorkshireman who 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 is proud of being from Yorkshire. He's living in Yorkshire now, and you you don't live on the boat. You've you've got a house as well. So it's so it's not like as if it's you're here all the time, and and you've got it absolutely stunning you've got an absolutely wonderful partner in Kathy yep, and yep, she, she's yep. she's lovely isn't she, yes, she is. and, and I can see that you're very happy being here and that's that, that that's what you want to be happy oh it, yes it's it's great and and uh, it, it's something that it, it holds for me a little bit of the way I grew up yes because we're not sort of full of technical wonders here we can watch DVDs and uh, we don't have television here. No. We actually pick, with DVDs, you pick what you want to see. Exactly. <clears throat> like I must say, Jim, that they, a, a lot of people have been saying it, that the music now, I think it's diabolical. So do I. Uh, and I had a, a great email from David Johnston, Elton John's guitar player, three days ago and he was saying nice things about the songs because he used to be in Magna Carta that was 1970 to 73 yes and he was one of those wonderful musicians I've ever met yes and he just said he thinks that the whole music situation now is diabolical yes yes well it's funny we we were having a conversation the other day when we first met about um, producers and, and feelings and stuff and Todd Rundgren uh, uh, who for years and years I, I've been w watching Todd Rundgren I love him and he said that music now is 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 not anything like it used to be it's just a it's just a background noise it, it hasn't you know, the, the 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 sort of guts has fallen out of it yes um, I know a lot of the presenters Jim the the their intention is to appear as groovy as possible. But in fact, as I said to Davey, we've still got Johnny Walker on a Sunday, Sounds of the 70s. You've still got great DJs like Ken Bruce. Yeah, oh, yes. And, and Bob Harris, of course. Yes, yes. And Bob used to like what we did. But it's uh, it, it's gotten pretty bad. I, I was... Well, many people are saying, the bands are saying, after COVID, it's going to take an awful lot to get the music scene back to anything at all. Um, well, it, it'll only come back if there's a change of heart in the people listening to it. Yes. Uh, I was a great compliment, which is on the back of the book over there, Jim, is Fred Della writes for Mojo. Mm -hmm. And he called me the English Paul Simon, which was a compliment beyond compliments. Scott yes. Paul. What a guitar player, what oh, a songwriter, yeah. what yeah. a singer, what a producer. Yes. And I think 
everybody out there should just ask themselves, where is the new Dylan? Yes. The, the Dylan is doing very nicely, thank you. But where's the new Dylan? Where's the new Chet Atkins? Where's the new Loving Spoonful? Where's the new Eagles? Yes. And then, as Davey said, and the one thing you can't get past, where's the new Beatles? Because yes. there'll never be another. Yes, absolutely. They, they shook it all down and turned it around, and there's nothing compares. No. And no. I, I love the Stones as a rock and roll band. Yeah, I remember working in a studio in Will Jackson's studio in Harrogate, and this kid came in with, and he bought the Sex Pistols pretty vacant, and he was very cocky, and he asked me what I thought, and I said uh, it, it, it's a good rock record. So he was about to say that it was the only rock record. I said, well, uh, just have a listen to this. And uh, we put on uh, Brown Sugar, the Rolling Stones. Yes. Which they recorded at Muscle Shoals. And it went rather quiet. Yep. Because they just knew what they were doing. And they, they weren't doing it as a fashion statement. They were doing it because, particularly with Keith. Yes. His heart's in rock and roll. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I saw there's a really, really good documentary on YouTube that's recently come out with Keith Richard and it changed my mind about him actually. I've always liked him. I've always, everybody likes Jagger and Richard. I mean, I'm actually born on the same day as Mick Jagger, 26th of July, but he's what, four or five years older than me. But nevertheless, Leo's, you know, all right, all right, kind of thing. And uh, you've got to see this documentary by Keith Richard. It's absolutely fantastic where he's settled in America and he's got his ranch and everything and his lifestyle. You probably have maybe already seen it, but it's well worth watching. Yeah, yeah I, I'd love to watch that. He's come out with some incredible quotes, some out of respect for your audience. I won't come out with well, here. Well, yes. <laughs> no, but, thank uh, you. <laughs> but also very clued up. Yeah. And, and he was asked about the one point about the, the progress of the Rolling Stones. And he went, whoa, 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 the thing is, she's man, with the Rolling Stones, it's either going drastically right or drastically wrong. Yeah. <laughs> He's wonderful. He is. Yeah, I changed my mind about him. So just one final thing. Chris, you've been the absolute perfect host. I've Thank thoroughly you. enjoyed our time together. I know Righty this is go. not the last time we're going to see each other because nope. I think we're going to be good friends and it's been an absolute pleasure. I've lived every minute of that. That was fantastic. Thank you. And uh, you're a very nice guy and thank you very much indeed for your hospitality. Absolute pleasure. You know, and look after yourself and pa pass on my regards to Cathy for me, please. I most certainly will. She'll be up here in about three hours. Thank you very much. Nice okay to see you. Okay then, Jim. Bless you. Bye now. Bye. Bye.